special segment on Champions League. What a fucking midweek, bro. 18 goals across four games. Banger teams. Like an entire two days of football games and nothing much to separate between the teams. Like it is absolutely insane, right? And arguably, I, I would probably go out and limb and say that this is the best like quarterfinal draw we've seen in a while. And hopefully, like if the first leg is any, you know, in- indication, second legs will be banger. But before we go into like the next future looking stuff, I want to bring us ground us all and like, you know, talk game by game. By game. First, I want to go into like Arsenal game. Arsenal fans, are you guys happy with the outcome first? Um, firstly, uh, who was saying that like this year's Champions League was like boring and it was shit? Uh, it's probably like one of the best. Yeah, like, this, now... guy the white, this guy in the white t-shirt. <laughs> Only United <laughs> fans will say that. <laughs> I'm a Madrid Look. fan. What are you saying? <laughs> um, and coming to the game. I think the result is really good for us uh, just because of the fact that Bayern were sort of coming back into the game. We go to Allianz Arena to play uh, basically the way we've been playing all season, defensively stable. And uh, I think it'll suit us more than the Emirates game. The Emirates game was very passionate and very emotional. I think it'll be more of a job in Allianz Arena. I'm happy with the result. It could have been better if we uh, would have finished 3-2 with that penalty in the 90th minute. But overall, I'm I'm happy, and uh, I think we can go through. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I I see it in a very similar way, and I feel like it was a blunder and a blinder from Arteta. Like he blundered with the starting lineup, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, with playing Jorginho, I think he got ran over in the midfield a little bit, and Kivior was. I mean, we all know what happened with him. Uh, so I think that was kind of a blunder, but the way he managed the game, uh, like you know, while the game was going on, so he kind of like brought Odegaard and Rice on fullback positions to make passing lanes available, and then he also made uh, our attackers drop into the midfield, making uh, making it a three instead of two pivot. So just to you know enable all these players to to pass it from the back. I think he he made really good substitutions. Zinchenko, I was shit scared wasn't on board with it but then uh, that worked out really well i mean that kind of like tipped the ball the game in our favor like it calmed the nerves down he was able to hold the ball and was able to use the extra man in the midfield i think the only thing that lagged for us was uh martinelli i think i don't know if it's tactics uh again not blaming the player i think it's just something that we need to figure out as soon as possible uh yeah. our left wing but other than that i think it was a good game uh yeah. and nerves definitely played a part Dude, I, I know these Arsenal fans will let toot their own horn, but Sid, do you have any different opinions? Uh, personally, I thought like they screwed the pooch because they were clearly favourites going into this and I did not expect like a 2-2 score. And I was, although I bet that it's going to be 1-1 and I was, you know, I have $100 riding on this game, but Sid, do you have any? Yeah, I think like Bayern, this is the best time to beat Bayern, I think. And especially given how Arsenal has been playing, I think Arsenal would be very sad to have and with that to the draw in the end, like taking this one point and heading into Allianz with like a uh, zero, basically no lead into Allianz, right? Like, Bayern's team are knackered, Tuchel is knackered, they have like literally only one thing to play for and after that given, like they're sitting at the top of the table in the Premier League, they have such a high goal difference, nobody's even close to them. They seem to be in control as well in the end, since the beginning of the game, but then it just like sort of slipped in typical Arsenal fashion, right? So I'm glad they came back. There were some like controversial penalty shouts as well from both ends. But yeah, I think 2-2 was a fair result given how both the teams played at the end. So I would say no complaints. Yeah, that that's a great segue because uh, penalty incidents, right? They blew up. Can I answer? Group... For, can I answer first? Just uh, just forty seconds. Uh, yeah. um, so it's, uh, I think it's really unfair to say that. Uh, Bayern ha- have been having a bad season, so we have to take them lightly. It's still a team with Sane, Nabri, um, Thomas Muller, really, really amazing players. Alfonso Davies, some players who were considered to be the best in the world like just a year back. Um, and they have Champions League pedigree. They, have, uh, they were top of the group. Uh, bottom of the group was United in that particular group. Uh, yeah. So it was a pretty tough uh, group. And um, 
I think it was easy. I think it was easy too. <laughs> But uh, coming back to the game, I feel like, and piggybacking from what AJ said, I think Arteta made a few mistakes in the game, which was uh, personnel related. He probably should have started Jesus, uh, who I thought was uh, really good and really a handful for the Bayern defense. Uh, I think he should have started with Partey and not Jorginho because Jorginho was getting sort of like crumbled in the, uh, in the center and he was getting pressured into playing a quicker pass. And thirdly, coming to what's going to happen in Allianz and why it's different from what happened at the Emirates was simply because... Um, This was a home tie where Bayern did not have any fans, so Arteta felt the need to go out and attack. And I feel like in the Allianz, we're going to be way more defensively stable and it's going to be much harder to beat us and much easier for us to counter. And uh, Bayern have fast players, so that that's going to be nullified. So I'm pretty positive about that. So yeah. And just, just to add one more thing, right? Uh, the very fact that Bayern are not at all in contention in any other competition makes it... a lot more challenging to beat them in the yeah. in the Champions League because they're literally playing the whole game full like the whole season is dependent on next five games if they were to go up, up until the final in four now so they can rest players they can play whoever they want they don't really care they can throw away games and they can just turn up in the Champions League that's one but the other thing is like if you look at city right city has been the best team for five years now and they only won the Champions League last season in like what four or five fifth attempt so it's not as easy as it seems the league Uh, performance and 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 uh, position doesn't really transfer to Champions League the way we all expected to. So I think it's that's that's also like and they were up for it. Yeah, 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 and and third is the pressure. I mean, all of our players, the Liba and everybody, they were fluffing balls left, right, and center. So don't get me wrong, we were very nervy throughout mm-hmm. the game, but uh, I think that's kind of also expected. Emirates was shit. Uh, I don't care what anybody anybody else says. Emirates was absolute shit. Uh, How do you know? Much better, bro. It was. Like, I mean, you could you could see it transmit through chill, the TV. To chill, I mean, himself said that it was one of the best crowds that he's uh, seen. Yeah. Ian Wright That's... said that. I mean, there probably has is a basis on that, right? People who visited the stadium. <clears throat> no, but like I've I've read accounts of people who have who as fans have gone to the stadium and they have like you know it's it wasn't up there. There was a lot of nerves in the first half as soon as we went two one down. You could actually hear the pin drop kind of bro, silence. What do you think will the happen? The TV again, again it doesn't translate to real life, but then you could you could see that uh, on on like normal people as fans accounts. So yeah. I feel like yeah we've been louder in previous occasions. That could have been better, but again. uh super confident for the next leg what do you think will happen in allianz in that case like if you, if you're complaining about emirates being not a great atmosphere the, i was going to tell you guys i think the the difference is a home crowd and an away crowd right that's the biggest difference mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you could not you couldn't couldn't sit back and let them attack at mm-hmm. home just because you are the favorites at away and you could just do whatever and we have definitely been better away from home than home, at home So yeah. that's the reason like, why I'm so positive yeah. about that too because the reason that we were nervy and the reason that we made mistakes or whatever was because we were playing completely on the front foot first minute on Havertz and Odegaard fully pressing them it was it was an onslaught of attack from our side and they exploited the space that's not going to be the game Allianz you're going to see Arsenal versus City did talk copy and Arsenal trying to nick a goal trying to nick a goal um and not Conceding anything, not giving any space to Sane, Dabri, so many fast players. It's not. It's not going to happen. It's going to be much more of like a safe. Like we will be less. Uh, actually, we will be very anxious. But I don't know. We will be anxious, but it won't <laughs> be transmitted <laughs> through the yeah. crowd. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. And, and that's why I want Martin to step up because in trans, we don't really have. I mean, I've I've realized this one thing after looking at the Champions League so closely. Uh, is that. <laughs> I want that too, bro. Uh, is the fact that we don't have clutch players? Like we just don't. No matter what people say, like you know, do you remember last goal that won us? Like something that out of the world that won us a game. I the last thing I remember was United at home last season, Saka, where he scored. Like he came in and he scored. But other than that, I don't remember us scoring great goals. I think I think Trossard's been pretty clutch, like coming in no, no, no. and scoring all team these. Team goals clutch. is different. So team goals is different. Or like individual goal. Yeah, individual yeah, like yeah. yeah i mean that's not the kind of team only we are like i, I feel like it's but, but when you look at champions league i think mm. most of the teams have scored like the goals that we've seen this out of 18 19 whatever it is at least half of them have been like you know players just individual quality shining through outrageous yeah. uh sane yeah. turned 
कि वी आर ओवर फर्स्ट पास वॉज ग्रोथ का जस्ट प्लेइंग दैट मैग्निफिसेंट पास सिटी रियल मडेड ऑल ऑफ देम वर लाइक यू नो कैन लाइक ग्रेट गोल सो आई थिंक वी लैक दैट एंड आई थिंक दैट वुड बी अर नेक्स्ट स्टेप नेक्स्ट सीजन बट आई थिंक दैट्स दैट्स फॉर समर फॉर नाउ वी जस्ट नीड मार्ट नेली राइट since you have so many opinions quickly tell me how the second leg is going to play out aj uh i think uh, as neerav said i think it'll be it'll be kg it won't i i kind of disagree that it be as kg as cities because city is kind of like a different monster uh bayern they can't really hold that ball and attack for that long at least as shown by the evidence in the bundesliga so it'll still be a a defensive game with the uh, jihadi football But I shouldn't say that. But, haram ball but, is yeah. a better. Yeah, haram. yeah, that that one haram ball. But uh, I think I'm I'm confident we'll nick it. We'll 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 nick it. We won't. It's funny you said jihadi it. football because ISIS were going to attack <laughs> the Emirates. <laughs> that's why. That's why I was like, no, it's not the best side. Hmm. All right, ask Nira for putting the hmm. Bayern hat on. What would Tuchel do to counter this haram ball that you're talking about? uh i think uh, it's going to be a little tricky because he has alfonso davies missing who is creatively good offensively good but i think he's going to play somewhat of a similar style same team i'm guessing with left back probably a different uh, left back and i think they they're probably going to be also like um, playing around arsenal's defense just like city were I, that's what i feel i feel like it's going to be a similar game and they will rely on individual brilliance or a really good combinational play or an error from arsenal uh to get a goal but overall i don't think there's going to be any tactical differences uh i think tuchel's just going to you know let them play their game um try to capitalize on any small error which uh, arsenal make and he really wants the crowd to be up for it he said that like two three times in his press conferences so that is what's going to build the pressure on arsenal we we've, we've been known to bottle situations and i feel like if they have to get a win they have to really pressure us and we have to feel it yep no that's fair um i'm just going to end the segment by saying that the king of the london has scored <laughs> from the penalty box so we will see what happens i thought that's in nabri <laughs> <laughs> We are talking about the penalties. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Uh, <clears throat> now, from one banger on a Tuesday night to another Yo, banger. No penalty. No penalty. Uh, we overdid it. So I was just thinking. Okay. okay, we'll talk about the penalty incident because that I think sparks a lot more uh, intrigue among people. So Sid mentioned something interesting. Um, previously about the penalty incidences in this game i know arsenal twitter was talking a lot and then tukel surprisingly shone light on something that we all missed in the game uh first aj is that a penalty bro okay uh, let me start it this way referee had a good game okay so let's keep that as a fact and keep that aside for all the decisions that we're going to talk about so i'm not criticizing referee uh and it was a penalty by the books but if that was given and if anybody in the world takes that as an excuse for you know whatever they need really need to look at themselves in the mirror and be like are you for real like tukel is fine because he's the manager he's come out and defending his team but then i see a few of bayern exec uh, executives coming in and like saying the same thing and i'm like dude a penalty has a meaning to it like it is given when the defending team has an gains an unfair advantage out of some something right so morally generally and like whatever by the books it is yeah sure by the books it is a penalty but it's never given and if and that's for any team like any team in the world i don't care if it's like the most hated team is chelsea or united but like it's just not a penalty anywhere in the world so let's just bury it and not talk about it ever again cool so raya is just going to keep passing the ball and saliba is just going to keep picking it up or gabriel whoever yeah even I, even i even i i'm willing to do no, it if it's pass accuracy Person pass accuracy. So, uh, you know, when, bro, what if this was the Champions League final and Arsenal was playing Bayern? Like Bayern did the same thing against Arsenal. Uh, I have no trust problem. Me, so the only yeah, trust me, trust me, yeah, no okay. the simple, simple. I'm I think this. Right on that. The yeah, I mean, it's if it gains any advantage to Bayern, sure, that's a debating point. But this mm. doesn't gain any advantage to Arsenal. It's literally nothing. True. It means nothing. It does nothing. It's, it's, it's absolutely just a. stupid thing to even like dwell over and i think tuchel is basically just doing this to distract everyone from the real incident which is the saka penalty which is uh, a much more of like a debate 
than this kiddish thing yeah this this is not worth debating i mean okay <clears throat> since uh, i'm i'm going to ask the person who flip flopped on this the most Sark- nira is saka as a penalty bro yeah 100% pen 100% so i'll tell you the reason also why i flip flopped when i saw it for the first time and the angles that they were showing it from it definitely looked like uh once saka took that turn his right leg kind of goes into noyer uh, but then i saw it again and again and again i heard many opinions i heard different things and now my view is that noyer is not static at all he is coming into the play he's actually putting his leg out more than saka has put his leg out and there is a point of time where saka can't evade that so he naturally saka the problem with what saka did is towards the end he did a little bit too much he, if even mm-hmm. if he would have stayed static noyer would have taken him out it was that it was that fast and it was that small of a gap so yeah. i i think that's any day of any week that's a pen because what else can so- he do at that point said is nodding i want to go to him yeah no so i think saka outstretched his like far too much and it's pointless to say what would have happened if he had not done it but the fact that he went out for the penalty and noyer wasn't that fast to be honest saka was the faster one yes he was out of control yes noyer has every right to go for the ball to defend his goal and he is not charging at saka at an unreasonable pace or like to foul him or anything i think saka just took the bait and went into noyer like whenever he could and i think that is it's it's doesn't really look like a penalty when you look at it close up although like in instant replays might say otherwise but i don't think it's a pen at all aj agrees with uh, said he told me on like a direct text message bro all i care about is alian zarina bring it on we'll <laughs> you know i'm glad it happened uh, saka would be like i haven't seen saka that furious and i don't think saka is a cheat like in terms of like he's not one of those players who will dive around and will flip flop and like try to buy decisions he generally gets beat up and then he get, gets up and then he just walks around and plays his yeah. game so uh yeah sure whatever it is I mean, in, in my opinion it was a penalty uh noyer was moving like noyer obviously noyer wasn't as fast as saka was because they're obviously the the motives are different right but uh if you if you if you see the replay noyer planted his foot as soon as the ball went past him and saka was there so he was he knew what he was doing like he just timed it really, really well and <laughs> and maybe like that's what saved him and and whatever it is it was a penalty but i'm glad it happened uh, we'll hmm. get to see the true ultimately, star ultimately at the end of the and day um, and uh, all these other cole palmers of the world so when for football <laughs> Ultimately, at the end of the day, the coaching staff and Arteta haven't complained, so we don't care. Honestly, yeah. same like it's not yeah. like Newcastle. Everyone was angry. Yeah. This is chill. Yeah, this is also like a new thing for Arteta, right? He said for every decision, he said I didn't, see, I didn't see it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Yeah. He knows, he knows, haram ball is coming, dude. He he knows that yeah, he's preparing right. for the haram ball right now. He, we don't yeah. have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool. That's a wrap on our Arsenal Bayern game. We'll see. Harry Kane was a red card though. <clears throat> Stand by it. Why? Just for walking on Emirates Arena and like scoring a goal, like for existing. For existing. Harry Kane has scored the highest number of goals against Arsenal, right? And and Arsenal misses Arsenal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ten of them. Ah, ninety percent of them are like fluke penalties. So yeah, sure. <laughs> you you know who does this, by the way? He did it at your pitch, no? <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Why is I extra time? <laughs> Hat trick, hat trick, and also for this, for for this, just fun trivia. Who do you think has scored the highest number of goals against Man United? Salah. Yeah. Yeah. Salah. Yeah, Salah. Oh, Salah. <clears throat> cool. Uh, let's not talk about United because we are un- in- irrelevant for this. <laughs> conversations for the first and for every other conversation like how arsenal were for the last 7 years we will get there uh, later but let's I, talk I about... genuinely like relish the fact that we live in the Whoa. present and not in the past Whoa. we've been doing that and it hurts so maybe you can continue doing that we'll talk the next about time it after the season ends bro move on the next time we do principles i'll tell you that i'll be sure to tell you that bro next <laughs> week we'll principles uh, moving on to the next one which was actually a firecracker of the game if you look at the stats there was fucking combined xg of 1.3 from both teams but there are six goals on paper how in the world is that fucking possible 
let's break it down. Um, we don't have that much time to break it down because that fucker scored in the second minute. Bro, let's talk oh. about that goal. Bernardo Silva. KDB was missing and Bernardo stepped up to the plate and took the most awesome free kick I've seen in my life. Do you guys, any reactions to that? Oh, Initially, no, when that I... That was just genius, bro. Yeah? That, that free kick, like, just the audacity to do that in, in a Champions League quarterfinal and also, like, you have to realize that this is, like, the exact match from the tie that City had to win the Champions League in the semi-final last year. So, like, there's pressure building up already and Guardiola, I'm pretty sure he has done his classic bit of overthinking before every game, trying to fucking micromanage every single aspect of his tactics and how his team are going to play. And I don't know if this was part of his plan, but if it's just Bernardo Silva himself doing it, I mean, hats off to it. This was... I, I think Lunin could have probably tried to save it. 100%. Like he, he could have done a bit better, but just full credit to Bernardo Silva even hmm. just for trying it, I would say. I mean, it's a Silva genius move, but uh, Lunin could have done much better to, if that. Yeah. Like he, he had no awareness there. I don't see Corto making the same mistake, basically. But also, the thing is, I think he did not expect it. That's why he was like sort of off guard to concede that goal in the first place. So again, kudos to yeah. Silva. Ha- I'm happy, dude. It set the tone of a great yeah. game. Like that's how it should be. Yeah. It's like a then... starting of an avalanche, right? Like. Once hmm. that goal went in and the fucking entire game was so disorienting to watch. Like, you don't know which team is on top and you can see how Guardiola set up his team. Like, we have Kovacic and Rodri and Stones, all three of them. Stones doing whatever the fuck he does in the midfield. But, like, Kovacic hmm. and Rodri trying to boss the game, trying to look for angles and then Madrid just being Madrid and scoring on counters. I mean, that Kamavinga goal was slightly lucky, I would say. But, Rodrigo, man, what a calm finish. Although I was like a minor deflection, but like I loved that calm finish from Rodrigo. And uh, like I want to talk about like two big personalities which I thought were missing. I was really expecting a lot of them. Jude and Haaland, both. I mean, Jude at least like he did something, I think, in the game, but Haaland was completely missing. Where where is the asteroid that we saw last season, bro? I think a big Astra game... Astra has been neutralized. Okay. Go ahead, Asia. No, no, I was just saying, like, he, he, he was missing last season too. Like, he didn't do shit in, in Champions League. Not that, I mean, this season he's also missing uh, in, in <laughs> Premier League. But uh, even last season, if I remember last five games, clutch matches, he wasn't anywhere. I mean, he was a little bit more of a presence, but he didn't really contribute to, to the game so that much. He was more of, like, a name and, and, and you know, to scare people hmm. away. But I think people have figured him out. What is he, honest, a scarecrow? <laughs> yeah, bro. He's just a scarecrow who's not scary anymore. Uh, I have different there. opinions. So I feel like... Uh, we have... Yeah, I feel like he's been used like a, as a pawn to uh, stretch defenses, to like make, you know move the other team's players so that like the wingers can mm. come in. Uh, so I think it's just the way Guardiola uses him. I feel like if he plays in a transitional team like Madrid or something, he'll score a lot of goals. But then he it doesn't matter because he does a lot for the team anyway. And in big games, especially, he can like a lot of defenders would focus on defenders and managers would focus on Haaland. So that's why he takes a lot of the uh, you know attention away from other players, and he can move the defenses so to open up the defense even more. So he was he was used nicely, I would say. But obviously, hasn't this been his criticism that he's not been able to do anything off the ball, or like he's he's not been able to contribute to the game if he's not scoring goals? Isn't that the main it, con- and he's criticism? Wor- it that was the criticism in the first, I think, ten games. But he's worked on that a lot. Now he does a lot. Like he de- he's defensively there. He tries to link up play. He's still getting better and better at that. I feel like there'll come a time where he'll be the perfect striker. But. Uh, uh, for now, yeah, already. yeah. If not already, and, but for now, City are scoring goals, so I don't think it's the, the, yeah. that big of a problem. Yeah, and I feel City are already set up in a way that they share their goals amongst the entire mm. squad. Mm. So, like, Haaland does not need to be the like thirty-five yeah. goal a season striker at all. He just has to make the team as a whole slightly better to play. Yeah, and he already has nineteen goals in the Premier League, by the way. And we call him in the shit. So. Yeah, Boy, and... he did. You're, you're legendary. We did not. I mean, he co- he scored what five goals against Luton, but like fine. 
start padding max but sure <laughs> that's yeah speaking of scoring goals i'm actually really 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 impressed with foden like he i think has grown strength to strength i really thought at the beginning of the season with alvarez doing so well last season i thought he will just like take that role that like foden's playing now but foden's just fucking owning it bro like he's there he's like to nirav's point whenever like haland is stretching the defenders away foden is there like receiving that ball and actually like that killer fucking left foot dude like again his goal what a clutch clutch fucking goal man like that was insane he's that was uh, i don't like fading uh, praising foden but uh, absolutely not yeah <laughs> but I have to give it because to him man yeah. because of competition yeah he's the only true competitor yeah. uh also but... because of the city fans like i yeah not anyway, city fans right, right. more just saka dude that's it but uh his goal is insane and you know in some ways he can do things that even saka can't like just yeah. have to agree with the fact that technically he's so good and he can play in all all different positions he doesn't uh it doesn't feel like city miss de bruyne when foden plays when bernardo plays these players are just too good yeah weirdly he feels like a blend of someone who can create goals and also score goals like oh, oh. Wow. kdb and halen had a baby mm. that we didn't know of like, somewhere yeah. uh but yeah, fucking nuts i don't know what it takes for the team to lose but uh speaking of that it like, takes a thought... deflected havertz goal for the team to deflected lose deflected martinelli havertz. goal i'm sorry martinelli goal for the team yeah, to lose yeah. i'll show you <laughs> Fucking you guys will go this set up the Haram ball. This guy is gonna <laughs> fucking jinx the shit out of us. <laughs> Bro, I don't do it. I I don't have that juju in me. It's you. Don't say. You don't say anything. Mm. I think the jinx is yeah. Nihal right now. But mm. if we go back far enough for the Liverpool game, but yeah. let's off topic. So. <laughs> Fair. Quickly, um, how do you think the return leg will play out, Nirav? Um. <laughs> Uh, again i feel like uh, it's it's going to be at the etihad so it's going to be a banger of a game uh i feel like city would want a little bit more control uh, of the game so they are probably going to make changes surrounding that they're going to probably bring in uh, more midfielders change the tactics a little bit there and madrid is just going to madrid so it's going to be a banger of a game i expect a high scoring game again i expect this tie to go to 5 6 6 5 Seven, six, something like that. Yeah, and a notable fact like Tichmeni is not there, so I think they'll bring in Milicio oh, yes. if he's yeah. fit. Milicio. Yeah. So yeah. that is going to be interesting because uh, I didn't think Tichmeni Tichmeni was that good to begin with in the game. He was just after he got his yellow yeah. card in the fourth, fifth minute, and after that, just a very timid performance. But Fuck, dude! I'm actually waiting for this return leg like, more than a Bayern. Every and return leg, like, dude. Every quarterfinal return leg like, is gonna be tasty here. Yeah. Why the yeah. fuck did they schedule both these games on the same day, dude? Like, yeah. it's so fucking unfair. Uh-huh. Like, it's unfair. I think it's gonna go to the penalties. Oof. Uh, I think it's gonna go to the penalties. Holy Could, shit! Ortega versus Lunen. Sudden death. Ederson and uh, like Kotto are probably cringing somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, actually, uh, I didn't have too many hopes from today's set of games, but my there is God, a, first game. Uh, there is a, one more thing from Madrid uh, City. Uh, this is a, basically a complaint from Guardiola. Guardiola said that the pitch was kind of. <laughs> Guardiola has had his Klopp moment now. He said the grass was not too uh, good. It seems like, and it feels like this happens a lot. Like whenever there's a possession-based team, we know it because it's been happening with Arsenal. I feel like Liverpool do this a lot to their pitches, so it becomes really hard for like teams to move the ball around, and it becomes easier for team who are, teams who are like more direct, like Madrid, more transition-based, more. direct have headers of the ball want to win second second balls and score goals uh those teams it's perfect but for teams who want to play on the ground they want to play possession based football there's there's some scam going on there and i'm totally with pep bro i think i think pep just feel an extra amount of angst whenever he goes to burn about from his past days and i think it's just like a collective amount of hatred coming out but sure i, I do see your point where like 
uh, more like control based team will face it uh, face that issue you know like i saw a crazy stat which said that madrid had basically the lowest amount of possession in this game in the last 3 years like 38% possession overall and that is fucking insane like if you see from ancelotti's point of view in the next game he definitely wants more control and germany is not there he wants a midfield where like i don't know if modric will play because like modric was really good when he came on and like, that final goal was almost clipped because of him so I, it's going to be very important for madrid to have control in, in the next game like, for for any hope for them to like go through i think guardiola also had, the comment was more tongue in cheek than than actually a <laughs> comment wherein like because they 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 wanted the the roof to be shut right before the game and everything so i think it was more of like just giving yeah. like throwing a taunt and like just you know kicking him in the back kind I of thing exact words were i like to see the sky but this is impressive but you yeah. know should focus on the pitch <laughs> yeah what's <Yeah>. above <laughs> it's fucking nuts i feel like fucking this uh, pep school of like management arteta and pep are always talking about grass and we are here as like teams of like transition based football which never yeah, understand on the other side yeah. so bro but one thing i have to give pep like i don't really care about pep or or man city in general but i absolutely love his sarcasm in the press conferences yeah. like the shade he brings it's just next level i haven't seen anybody being like with a straight pep face pep is a legend dude. absolutely He's a legend. He's like a fucking miracle. So when you man. average three trophies per season over your career, you will obviously yeah, get. You have that arrogance. You have that backing, and you just say whatever you want with a straight face, and then you know you just ruin it's the other the person. But also, like, the, no one can yeah. say shit to you. It's done. It's over. Yeah, yeah. If he says, if he talks like that, it's over for the media. He's cracked. Yeah. He's totally cracked yeah. the scene. He's like, I'm going to act like a. And you guys should see the documentary, man. He's m- mental. <laughs> Pep is a mental guy. He he does weird shit. Like the team is surrounding him, and he's like, ah, oh, something something weird, bro. Feel it, feel feel. It. I don't know what shit he does. It's he's crazy. He's a crazy guy. The best move. Like some crack somebody asked. Starts... Why... Yeah, go on. Go on. I'm saying that. the the best was when you know that that press conference after arsenal city and somebody was like you know why were you doing it to greenish and he was like oh because i wanted to be the the main man the center of attraction yeah, yeah, camera it's, right. it's, like, you know, it's all insane. about me right yeah it's all about me <laughs> i want to sleep go home and sleep with great satisfaction <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, absolutely love it love when managers do that absolutely it's insane yeah but uh moving on to the next set of like bangers i'd say on paper they weren't i thought they were like pretty dull games but fucking man barcelona psg served up a banger bro today what did you guys think of the game amazing game amazing game end to end uh couldn't take your eyes off it uh just like both managers you know attacking the teams are also attacking you had so many flair players in the game that uh, it just couldn't be boring right you had felix you had dembele you had uh, mbappe you had uh, vitinha who was so good by the way in this game oh, okay. so many flair players so many uh, rafinha was so good so overall attacking treat i would say uh, if you want to watch yeah. like an attacking treat and individual brilliance this was the game <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I think like the first half started off pretty slow. I would not have expected this game to progress the way it did, and like ending three two with like that goal at the end, it was fucking crazy. So, like from a neutral's point of view, it was probably a, one of the best games to watch. In this time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Two. And go ahead. How good? How good is that kid, bro? You mean Yamal? Um, Yamal. <clears throat> Yeah so essentially what Javi has done is weirdly centered the team around uh, uh Lewandowski Rafinha and Yamal so Yamal basically is the guy who always gets the ball on the right wing and he is the guy who's responsible for the creativity for like providing um he has a lot of responsibilities for a 16 year old and he looks to yeah. he's the, uh, probably the best 16 year old we've ever had uh 16 yeah. is just too young of an age to be playing in these kind of competitions and obviously he has a crazy future um but yeah, yeah. this game was crazy man barcelona were probably uh, psg were probably much better in the start uh barcelona then came back uh with like uh, quick goals 
and then PSG again came back with two quick goals. And then finally, towards the end, I feel like um, uh, Barca had the edge. They were they could have gone four two up as well. Um, yeah, I I I honestly felt like the entire PSG team was good, except for Donnarumma. Hmm. He had like some Very mind bad. fuck moments. Like the first cross that like, Yamal put in, like yeah. he didn't have to like get off his ground, and, like you know, attack that ball. There was no need. Like there were defenders covering bases. It was absolute trash. And I think in the second and the third goals were also pretty savable. Like, I yeah. don't understand. Like, Christensen fucking headed it in front of him. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. Like, yeah. And there's so much hype around this guy. Remember when Mino just signed him? Yeah. Mino fucking, like, he's a rest in peace. But, like, he fucking, like, joked they a lot of people. Yeah. Pogba, bro. <laughs> Pogba, yeah. We, we oh. paid. Um, Biggest but... daylight robbery. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but if I have to big someone up for this game, like one person who really uh, surprised me was uh, Barcola from PSG. So PSG had uh, Lee playing in, in uh, Lee Kang in playing. Uh, he got injured like really mm-hmm. early on, and then Barcola came on. I think in the twentieth minute, maybe before that, and he was just superb. He was, everything was going through him and Vitinha. Vitinha as well, um, like just really surprised me how good these players are. He's short he's creative he's just uh he's so creative and uh he's young as well so psg have a really young good team i didn't i didn't know that today I, i've seen vs like had a taste of psg and i think this team has a future yeah mm-hmm. just yeah. about mbappe for he uh, needs 90 to go. million more <laughs> i'm telling you he, they, they, they'll be good without him uh, as well. I mean, it's a controversial <laughs> statement, yeah. but he didn't have the best game. I think Dembele was star, Vitinha was star, uh, Barcola was good. Mbappe was sort of missing. He had one-on-one moments where he could have dribble pass and could have done something, but it just didn't click for him today. Um, I think his eyes are already at Madrid. I think he watched the game before that <laughs> night and he's like, uh, he part- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to his mind got off. <laughs> yeah. Do hmm. any of these two teams scare you guys for, or do you think like they can challenge the the other half of the, the I mean, quarterfinals? It's a final, like a lot of weird shit can, I mean, Inter almost beat City. Right? Like if, if yeah. it wasn't for Lukaku, they would have been level. It would have been a different game altogether. Uh, so you never know, dude. Finals are just like very weird, emotionally driven games. Chelsea fucking beat City. Like, for context, right? like it's just a weird weirdness happens, and um, I think both PSG Barcelona on their day can just show up. Yeah, they and like you said, yeah. like you said, right, AJ, uh, the Champions League games you need a little bit of individual brilliance. You need because uh, there's so much transitional play here. There's so much counter attacking happening that there are there have to be flares, special players in the Champions League who can do something special. Yeah. And PSG and Barcelona have so many of them. They have game changers uh, because they bought game yeah. changers straight up. Uh, so they can uh, turnovers, transitions, anything. They can just score goals like anything. It took literally three minutes for uh, two go- uh, P- Barcelona to concede two goals from PSG. And it was all individual brilliance. And it was a one-sided yeah. game till then. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, we wish, I wish Arsenal go and get one winger or somebody like that. Anyway, we moved on from Arsenal. <laughs> Yeah, quickly moving on to the last game, actually. And then after that, we'll come round robin to do a couple of segments. Hmm. Atletico, actually, I mean, it was a dead rubber. We all knew on paper Atletico was going to go through. But, dude, they really impressed me. Like, in the first half, I thought they were really fucking on top of, like, Dortmund. And I did not see that style of, like, intent from Atletico. Because in my head, I always associate Atletico as, like, fucking these, like, thugs. Who sit back and like you know fuck them up, and you know not be on the front foot as much, but fuck like they were blitzing. Did you guys think of the same? Like had any different opinions? Yeah, I th- I feel like uh, yeah. Go ahead, sit. Go ahead. No, like uh, Atletico were right on it from the beginning, and they they just like stayed there in time when like they capitalized on that mistake from uh, Dortmund's keeper at the beginning, and like. That's how like they got momentum of the game, release the pressure, settle in, score another goal. But I think like yeah, they they were really good, especially with the first half. They they wanted to like control the game and like have the ball and like make sure that they 
score even more, but although they couldn't. And I think in towards the end, Dortmund sort of found like half a foot somewhere in there, and like they scored that goal. And like towards the end, it was just it was just all Dortmund going through. So it was, I think it was a game of two halves, to be honest. Like Atletico started off very well in the beginning, and then Dortmund sort of came in. And like the last kick of the game was basically the header, like going onto the crossbar, and could have easily finished two two, but it's two one, and it's like advantage Atletico. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I, I, thought, I didn't see Dortmund at all for the first thirty minutes. So yeah. I, I I agree with that. Uh, go ahead, Nirav. Did you see the Griezmann's assist? Yeah. Bro? So there is just one guy oh. in this uh, in this tie who is just top, and he has to be mentioned again and again and again because this guy has been having a really good season. Everyone's underrated him since he left Barcelona, but Anton Griezmann, dude, what a player. Like, so clinical, so good, so deft. Um, That assist was too good. He does everything almost by himself, takes the ball by himself, um, you know, charges towards the defender himself, chips in, gives a really, really cute uh, ball to DePaul and, uh, like, a sublime finish as well. But he's become the talisman for Atletico and, uh, you know, he's causing so much uh, trouble to defences. I really like him as a player as well. You know, left-footed, aesthetically so good the way he plays, um, and a proper, proper attacker. Love him. Yeah. It's... Also, like just the awareness he had to like come back from the offside position, like hmm. when oh, like oof. Atletico just got the ball. Like oof. that was like yeah. that's how you know like a re- sign of a it's, really good. It's player, almost like, like he paused the game. in his head. He paused the yeah. game. Like okay, this is the line. I'm gonna run back. That was really exactly. good. That was really good. That was really fast. Really? It was. It happened faster than the play was happening. So that was impressive, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. What an underrated player. Yeah, and you know what? Like impresses me about like Simeone is his fucking like setup, dude. Like in the sense that Axel Witzel is their centre back now. Mm. Like and he's. He got like fucking Aspilicueta back from Chelsea, and then like he's starting in their centre back, like, left centre back. This guy, Aspilicueta, the left centre back, like, that too. Like hmm. in the sense, this guy just, I feel like he has, he's so, in terms of man management and like setting up teams and like people following directions. I don't think there is anyone that comes close to this guy and is so not talked about because he doesn't have that CL trophy in his hand. So for that reason, I feel like. If he gets it to the final, that would be fun because hopefully this time there's no Sergio Ramos to score in the extra time and then, like, you know, fuck him up. But, yeah. There'll be a Gabriel. There'll be three, actually. Three Gabriels. (laughs) Uh, No, dude. I I feel like from that... Gabriels to (laughs) handball. Bro, whatever whatever, uh, Rambol he can play, Arteta can play better and we have three Gabriels. So, don't worry about it. We'll be there. Final thoughts though, if from that side of the team is there's any team that I do not want to face, it's Atletico. I feel like we can it'll it'll be a much more interesting game with Barca and PSG, but Atletico is just gonna break us. I mean if we're gonna do haram ball, they'll I don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> They'll do Harami yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, just... yeah. But to be honest, I feel like it's advantage Dortmund, if I'm being honest. Uh, Signa Luna Park, uh the Great Yellow Wall. And but... it's just a one goal. Uh, Game is over, my friend. So it's not, I, I genuinely don't think so. I feel like I, I think Arteta will learn a lot from how Simeone will go and yeah. set up that Haram and, ball. Uh, he, he, <laughs> has a, he has a lead. It's gonna Simeone be Simeone will have Harami ball. Bruh, it's gonna be like, and he's gonna he's not gonna play all these Molina and all these like you know cute players. He's not gonna play all this. It's, all this is done now. Okay. Saul is coming in, bro. <laughs> Saul is coming in. Yeah, Sav- yeah. Savage is coming in. Saul, all these. I call Saul. <laughs> All these, you also have a Gabriel. They yeah. have our Gabriel. Uh, all, these, <laughs> have Gabriel. all these OG Atletico boys are going to come in and it's going to be the... I mean, it's going to be, Alhamdulillah, some <laughs> intense ball, bro. So they have, you remember ball. Gabriel? You remember OG Gabriel? Gabriel Paulista? Yeah, yeah. 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 He is in Atletico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. They're going to send... Oh, uh, the time, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think they're going to send Sancho back to therapy, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, quickly, I want to do last two things before we wrap up. One, I want us to like rank the top five goals of the bangers that we've noticed because I think out of the 18 goals, 
arguably all of them are like really really good bar couple of them uh and the other thing that i want to do is quickly take the preds for all the four pictures right let's start with ranking of the goals uh what is your fifth goal what do you think is the fifth spot any shouts mm-hmm. this that's going to be very hard to uh manage if you're going to start yeah. from fifth <laughs> i think we should start from the okay, best let's start from the top hmm. like what is the best goal that we've seen this in over the in the let's first let's take a poll consensus for me it's going to be bernardo silva's one sec five second reasoning is just something that we don't see it's a high high iq for me it's a uh, valverde i think he, that goal was pretty magical the way he stuck the ball from outside the box yeah hmm because when I mean, just because bernardo silva is probably close second just because keeper could have done better that's the only reason said i would just i would just flip that like silva first and valverde close second i'm okay with that i But, think we yeah. can we can do that yeah so sit high yeah uh, no it's fine valverde can go second um yeah i feel like third third so sorry silva has Your goal is first, and Valverde's banger is second. second. What is third? Um, I, I, I think, Guardiola. I think Guardiola. Sure, yeah, that's a very good goal. Can can put that. Um, yeah, I swear, I didn't think that that dude had a right. So foot. apparently, in the po- <laughs> post game, he said something like, "The first touch was so bad that it reached a level where he had to take the shot. Like there was no other <laughs> option." So yeah, <laughs> it came out of an error, which is funny. What a slow goal! <laughs> slow goal, but yeah. yeah, he looked so awkward while shooting it. First goal in a city jersey, bro. Really? First goal. Yeah. yeah, of course. I'm... I mean, he just came. Yeah, it's in a season, but yeah, sure, I'll take it. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. Guardiola's number three. Who's number four? Uh. Uh. Yeah, Pino. The same goal, like game of four day. No, for me it's Rafinha. Rafinha second goal, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pedri ball. Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, individual brilliance, but also like the pass and everything, the com the combination of the two. I think. Yeah. I I think we are in a tough spot because yeah. we have three mad goals and we have two spots left. We have Dembele's goal, we have Rafinha's goal, and we have Phil Foden's goal, and we have to pick only two. I would, I would still, mm. I would still oh. give it to Dembele. Like out of all of the three, just because Phil Foden's goal, a uh, left foot curler, uh, that there was a position to score that goal. We've seen those type of goals. Um, who else did we say? It's just a jersey, bro. Rafinha. Raf- saying that. Rafinha. Rafinha's no, no, no. Genuinely, Rafinha's goal also a really good shot. <laughs> uh, but Dembele's was just out of the world, bro. Like the power mm. that he generated from that shot. from where he was the first the first touch that he uh, took to get away from the defenders that was insane it was a brilliant brilliant goal i would give it that but i i don't know so i was going to drop him with his goal but now i won't <laughs> out of the three hmm. fuck i just saw it <laughs> hmm. you like it twittering while you like it no. it's a good goal right no It's a good goal. I mean, it's a definitely a great goal. Don't get me wrong, but I think I I would just for me, Rafinha gave me Alex Sanchez's uh, Alexis Sanchez's vibe a little bit. Uh, in Arsenal, he used to score that out of the foot, not for you guys, mm. for us. Uh, he used to do that. So yeah, I think yeah, I like I like that more. Personally, I like them more. It's more of like a personal choice where what kind of goal you like. Well, I'm, I, think, I'm I don't o- think any of them is. I'm okay with one this. Above the other. I'm not emotional about this. Yeah. For me, I want to drop Rafinha's goal out of the top five for reasons that, like, it was a better ball. Hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. Pedri split that defense and, like, you know, put it on a pedestal. I would have been impressed if he banged it like the volley. It just like felt like. I, a... Okay, I, I'm going to just say one thing. We should definitely put watch Valverde's goal again. It was a volley. Valverde was, was insane. Yeah, Valverde was crazy, but Bernardo Silva is just like IQ level. We okay, don't. We just fair. don't see it. So about that. Fair, fair. Cool. So I feel Very like uh, ending it. I think we can put Rafinha's out. Uh, yeah. Give it four is uh, four is Dembele, five is no. We can four we can give four. Oh, four is Dembele and five is Foden. I I'm happy with that. Yeah. Either way is good yeah. for sure. me too. Sure, sure. Yeah, and spe- special mention for the worst goal of the of the 
this thing was probably Harry Kane's penalty. <laughs> Christensen. Nah, bro. Mm. Christensen was funny. <laughs> there was nothing there. He did not. Like, there was nothing there. It was just like it's, it's all. First of the game. Yeah. Yeah. He just came on, no? That yeah, was like just, fucking. Yeah. Ass. Just came on. Just like. Back. Corner, nothing yeah. there. Just ball came, headed it in so softly. Everything was so soft. <laughs> fucking, I'm but telling you, look at Chelsea boys are lucky, bro. In the fucking <laughs> league, I'm not even kidding. These ex Chelsea boys. Bro, look at Kama Wimbledon's goal also, right? Like that was just like just a random shot, like hopeful shot, and then just went in for some reason. Yeah, that was also but really good. Well. I liked it. <laughs> Whatever, but a little bit of a def- deflection, right? So we can't count that clean. But yeah. special mention definitely to Bukayo Saka, dude. That that curler was actually putting it past Neuer is not a not an easy feat, right? Although I can totally mm. th- like agree to the fact that that was completely Eric Dyer's fault. He just I don't know what he was doing there. He's he has like a guy coming in front of him. And he just ducked and hit his hands like it's some Sunday league football or something. <laughs> and Saka just so that's what we him. needed to do. But that's the that's the only. Issue that I have with that game that both both the goals were Eric Dyer. Yeah, like yeah. Jesus, yeah, he was flopped once and twice, and Eric Eric Dyer just went to some other dimension. I, he was like, nah, nah, I have no idea what is happening in thing. Fuck, actually, how did I miss it? I have to mm-hmm. give a special shout out to Gap J, bro. Fuck, mm. he spun my mind. Like, yeah. I lost money back. Beautiful. I lost. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> he just did some favela <laughs> shit and then passed the deal. <laughs> And so finally, he passed. He kept. He keeps on chopping only, bro. Like he'll go from right to left, left to right, right to left. Then he'll shoot it in the stands. Finally, he passed. And clutch boy is always there, right? Trossard with like his yeah. trademark trade becoming like the su- su- like super sub for us. Yeah. So it's so <laughs> Okay, bro. They'll take it, bro. If he wins, if he wins the Champions League, why not? Yeah, I have but a feeling. Like, do, do I ever think? If we win the Champions League, yeah, do you ever think Harry Kane and sorry, yeah, Tross Trossard's going to be that guy oh. who's going to score Trossard's the winning goal? Weirdly, I have a feeling coming on and quick, 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 quick question. Yeah, gonna be Kai Kai Havertz, bro. Hmm. Quick question, Nidhav, just to you: Do you think Partey is done or is he just rusty? Because he's played approximately fifty minutes up until now, ever since he come came back, and I was shaking when he came on. Hmm. Like in in Bayern Munich, he was misplacing the passes. Headers were all over the place. The thing is, just rusty or he's just done. Dude, forget about rusty. Yeah, he is definitely rusty. What was that ball to Saka? In the the whole penalty oh, yeah. was, incident was yeah. because Thomas Partey split yeah, 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 the defense. 100%. He split the defense suddenly and gave, yeah, made yeah. a chance at the ninety fourth minute. So I think he's yeah. he's still a, an insane player, and we we can use him. You just need to get on parties. I've been having too many jollof rice. So he needs to yeah. <laughs> he, has, he needs to train a little bit and we'll be good. Cool, cool. I just needed some reassurance because yeah, party is party. Yeah, that's right. what he's like, known for, like those I, passes yeah. and like the turning and passing. I kind of so, I want him to start Allianz Arena. Him and Declan Rice as pivot. But yeah, let's let's move on. Stop talking about yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah, to the last segment, which is just to keep our prediction league going mm. on. We have four banger of a ties. Tuesday next Tuesday ties are. PSG Barca first. Uh, quickly, Fred. Sid. PSG Barca. Huh. This was 3 2, right? I, I'll say 3 2 PSG. So, 3 2 PSG. It just ends in yeah. Milan or 3 2. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be like. 6 6. It's going to be penalties. Uh, yeah. Not 6 6. 5 5. No, 5 5. 5 no, five, 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 five. And who's going to win? 5 5. five, five, five and then pens. And then PSG is going to win. PSG is one. Five five on pens. PSG. This is very specific, bro. <laughs> Nira. Two one to Barca. Two one to Barca. Okay. It's at it's at Camp Nou, right? Yeah. Yeah. Three one. Barca. Barca is gonna get through. Three one. Wow. I mean, they are my they are my Champions League winners. So yeah, they are definitely gonna get through. Yeah. For me, I think it's gonna be two zero PSG. Hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Bro, is he still sulking about the Qatar money not coming line, in? Let's go. <laughs> no, dude, I just want no, someone. Not about that anymore. I think I think Mbappe will audition at this the biggest future rival. Yeah. And like silence the crowd. We'll see. He's a he's, he's a star. Score a penalty. Like, he he is gonna show up. I've seen that World Cup final. I can't write off Mbappe just yet. 
So there are more stars cool. in the uh, Barcelona team also waiting to make a point in the Champions League. We'll see, bro. Uh, cool. Uh, next, Atletico Dortmund at Signal Iduna. AJ. Uh, two one one will Dortmund, and then and then, and then penalties. Just, I don't know penalties. Anything can happen. Bro, fucking yeah. commit to something. <laughs> Dortmund. Who's the keeper? Oh no, they have Oblak, dude. Like Atletico is gonna go through on penalties for sure. Okay, fair. Nirav. <laughs> Zero zero. <laughs> oh God! We played death metal music. Whatever doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just setting up shop. Ice uh, ball, bro. Full on. Said, bro. I just can't see Sancho going through to the semi-final. So it's gonna be like two nil. Said is such a fan, bro. He's such a fan. It's like Manchester United is his family. तो तो माँ पे मत जाइए तू माँ छोड़ के गया ना मैं पे मत टकले पे मत जाइए इन दैट राइट इट्स गोल्ड बी वन जीरो एथलेटिको आई कैन सी दैट एवरीवन पे एथलेटिको विल सी आई कैन सी दैट हैपनिंग लाइक मोर टाइम्स देन माय प्रेडिक्शन सो या शोर कूल लेट्स गो टू द Non touchy one first. City versus Real Madrid. Nirav. Oh. Three nil City. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Sir. Ah, I don't know, man. This is tough. I think Madrid will definitely not concede three goals and like not do anything. It's probably going to be like two one Madrid. Maybe. Oh, three one City. I think it's gonna be two one Madrid. Let's go Madrid boys. Oh fucking hell! I can't sit through another like city win yeah. again. This is their best chance to stop. Okay, let's go to the touchy one now. Um, what do you mean by like we all I'm already touched? What do you mean by this is their best? Chance? Dude, these United home, United fans are actually actually Madrid fans in the in the in the Champions League and City fans in the Premier League. Basically, Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. They're been playing like a lot, bro. Where do you feel like that? No, bro. It's it's all logic, bro. What are you saying? We we have our priorities, our ancestral heritage sorted. <laughs> hmm. yeah. I feel like Sid will disown his kid if he's a Liverpool fan or something. Fuck <laughs> you, not in my house. Will, kid, who kid? I will make him an Arsenal <laughs> fan, bro. Wait, I'll show him clips of Saka when Saka wins four Ballon d'Ors. Cool. Uh, okay. Now, Now to, the, now to the last <laughs> one. Since there is so much stake in the game, I also want us to tell like the scorers and like how the game is going to progress. For sure, huh? with this, um, I was going to start with Sid. Sid, Arsenal by mm-hmm. score and Arsenal by Harry Kane is scoring again for sure. Okay, so um, I think two one by two one by two one by yeah one own goal from by like. Might as well. One, no. Nah. Eric Dyer on goal. I can see that. <laughs> Eric Dyer on goal. All three goals. Then AJ will never sleep, bro. All three goals <laughs> were Eric Dyer ne mare. <laughs> All three goals Eric Dyer ne mare. So I genuinely need to sleep. Then. AJ. So imagine Harry Kane and Eric Dyer coming together to fuck Arsenal in, in a Bayern jersey. That's just like what the fuck. Or imagine Arsenal Sorry. ending Harry Kane's trophy hopes this year after joining Bayern. It's tasty. Crazy. 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 He will cry, bro. He will drop on the ground and cry. He won't win any trophy after that. He's already crying. No, no. Man. Champions League is there, bro. Crying. Champions League is there. If he gets out of this, this has been a disaster signing. But yeah. <laughs> AJ. Uh, I'm not gonna predict this one. Dil se bhi two one, two one ask them. Two one ask. No, no, no. For me, dil se. I was gonna say two zero two one. I'm just giving two one for Kane. Whatever. Kane, Kane, to mare gan. Kane, to mare gan, bro. Begrudgingly respecting him. Arsenal se koi mare gan, bro. Bro, Odegaard and I think Martinelli. Hmm. Interesting. Cool. Nirav. Martinelli is more worn than. Like hope, then you know, pray and hope and all of those things. He, maybe, will go, bro. One time, will go. That's life, guy. Cool. We'll see. Nirav. Ah, uh, this is hard, man. 
my heart says Arsenal. Like I think I I want that to happen. But if I have to put my money, if there's like if something like that to think, I'm gonna say. You already put money yeah. on Arsenal. Man. I know, I know. But like if I have to, <laughs> if I have to predict uh, something. No, we were hoping a five nil at Emirates. No, that's why we put the money. Mm-hmm. I was, Again, I was, was and minutes. it was supposed to be that. It was just referees and a yeah. lot of other things. Uh, but uh, I think it's going to be one all, and and you just don't beat the Germans on pens. So Ooh. that is the that's how we go out. It's going to be a heartbreak. Don't worry, bro. You, you, I'm telling you, it's now. We have, we we got this. I know we got this, but if I have to predict, that's a that's yeah. a prediction. Mine. We have other fish to fry, Animesh. Always. <laughs> <laughs> bro, imagine we lose to Aston Villa or draw to them, and then we lose to Bayern. I would yeah, actually lose cry. To us, bro. Like I would oh. actually cry. <laughs> bro, AJ, the guy ne dega bro, two three days ke liye. Bro, main to waise hi ja raha hu. Matlab, I'll go to Bhutan for like some sannyas and everything. Come on, like a pure football tea talks then. Uh, thanks, guys. No one asked me, but I think I'll pick uh, a zero one Arsenal win, and I'm gonna lose uh, my money. Because I totally see uh, if that city game is any evidence, I feel like they're just coming like that, sitting down, fucking defending everything, and just Martin Lee just bagging up, bro. Someone will release him. He'll just like run like a. Okay, make so happy, make his new jinx. I'm song. so happy because I am the recently I am the jinx and you are the truth, Nihal. So I'm very happy this yeah, this has happened. Happy. It's Sai Nihal jinx has been changed. It's been changed. <laughs> Uh, but bro, but I don't like me. I want to change the prediction. Yeah, do it. I'm holding it, bro. It's it's bro, out there in the universe. Bro, no, no, I, I went with my heart and my mind and everything. <laughs> but then now that I'm thinking, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about What's it, remaining, bro. <laughs> bro, you know me, I'm saying. The superstition is remaining, bro. I predicted three-one oh. city, if you guys remember, and we drew. So I need to do something like that. So anyway, we'll we'll just stick to it. <laughs> Stick to it. You are you are so not the reason for Arsenal's downfall if that happens. Don't you are doing everything, bro. I I bro, feel it, bro. bro. Feel it. Actually, it looks like I am. You are personally responsible. <laughs> On that note, uh, please also do let us know in comments about your predictions um, and tell us how wrong we are, if it is possible. Right. Until next time, see you, everyone. Stay safe.